Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Mark with Kurt Bjorklund. We're in week six in the gospel of Mark, and that means chapter six. And in a way, chapter six is one of the turning points in the gospel of Mark. The first five chapters really give us a portrait of Jesus and his unfailing mercy for people and his compassion and graciousness. In a way, it's like the first part of Isaiah's servant song in Isaiah 42. And then in chapter 6, we start to see uh, the another part of Jesus' ministry, which is really what we'd call widening influence. And if we were to, again, read this with some backdrop of Isaiah 49, which is the second servant song, we can see that this is one where he wants to bring his people back and extend the knowledge or following of God to the ends of the earth. Chapter 49 of Isaiah, verses 5 through 6. And it begins with Jesus going to his hometown. Verse 1 says, He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Tom Wright, N.T. Wright, uh, says this about preaching. And he says, Preaching is something that is dangerously public and emerges from something intensely private. Parents and others who have known you when you were growing up are inclined to be embarrassed both at the revelation of something so deeply personal and at its being waved around in front of the neighbors. Everybody's vulnerable in a moment like that. And then he goes on and says that Jesus, in many ways, was even more vulnerable because not only was he just sharing uh, what the scriptures taught, but he's proclaiming something new. And so the people say, where did this man get these things? What wisdom was given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Yes, Jesus had half siblings. A prophet is not without honor. Uh, it says, and they took offense at him. And the they here is probably his family, people closest to him. And that is something that is really striking to me because there is a sense in which, and Jesus goes on and says, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. And the people here did not believe. And there's a couple things that this helps us to see. One is unbelief today doesn't mean that the person will never believe. James goes on and has uh, not just a belief in Jesus, but an actual ministry uh, that's substantial, whereas some of the other brothers we don't really hear about. The, the second thing that's that's just striking, verse 5, and he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Now, that's not nothing to heal people. That was one of the ways Jesus uh, validated his ministry. And I want to talk about this here in the coming uh, days, the idea of healing and power evangelism and some of this. But Note that the, the, the phrase could not do. Somehow, faith, belief, and the expansion of God's work are tied together. And that is um, something that, from a reform standpoint, seems, the Calvinist standpoint, seems odd to say. But when you read through the scriptures, you see that, that the more there's belief, the more powerful the work is. And I can say this as somebody who has preached for 30, over 30 years now. When I'm in a room with people who believe listening to the message, there's an air in the room of acceptance and work of God. And when I'm in a room that's resistant, and I've experienced this in different places, I'm so thankful for the people at Orchard Hill who believe and, and are passionate and there is sometimes in another context where I might speak an air of, uh, of rejection and it's just like, like the words feel like they're falling flat. And what I mean is the attitude of people matters to the work and the word of God. And then it says, and he marveled because of their unbelief and he went about among the villages teaching. So Jesus is rejected in his hometown 
And this sets the stage for chapter six in this turning point with the second servant song of Isaiah, which is just this. And that is there's a tension always between belief and unbelief and how far those in the mission of God will go to bring faith to the ends of the earth. So today, do you believe more than you reject? And how far are you willing to go to take the message to the ends? of the earth. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.